friends. It is day three of Romanthathon, and I have a few things to catch you up on. First of all, I am doing a 24 hour social media detox, and I'm doing it because I agreed to take part in a campaign before Romanthathon, but then the campaign got pushed to today sunny song will never be famous and i'm giving that away on my instagram they actually um source fire books sent me two copies one for me one to give away so that's super exciting thank you so much to them i also put in the description box of yesterday's vlog this book to give away and i will be picking that winner like near the end of the readathon but today i wanted to add one more I'm gonna add this ebook giveaway for the love bet by GL Thomas um, and it is book one in the love unexpected series so again it's just a code that I can give you so all of the directions for how to enter for that are gonna be in the description box of today's video okay now on to some reading updates and what my plans are for the day um, it is Monday so my husband is working all day I do have some things that I need to take care of as well, but I will be off social media all day today. And by social media, I mainly mean like I'm not on Twitter, so no worries there, but like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube just for watching. Obviously, I will have to edit today's vlog and post it, but I'm not going to be like watching videos or consuming content. Um yeah so that should be pretty interesting but i started last night i couldn't help myself 40 love by olivia dade and i am on chapter eight and this is the one that ally actually got me for my birthday and it's the second book in the marysburg series and tess and lucas and at the very beginning of the novel i guess tess and her friend are in florida on a beach and they're from virginia or tess is from virginia she is on a beach vacation for her birthday um she's turning 40 so again an older character but lucas is only 24 so there's like an age gap oh! anyway so she's out in the ocean and, and she's like you know messing with it or whatever and this wave like comes and takes her top away so she's just like in the ocean by herself like no freaking bathing suit top and yeah so she has to like call over lucas because he's like out in the water and she's like come over here come over here help me or whatever and he, she's like um so there's a problem i need you to get me a towel and then there's these kids like coming out in the ocean oh my gosh it is so freaking good so far and it's just like laugh out loud funny but yeah like i said there's an age gap and um she's 40 and oh he's 26 um so yeah so anyway she lives in virginia and she's trying to be the principal at marysburg high which is the same place that the characters from the previous book teach me work so that's super exciting but anyway yeah so really enjoying that one so far I like how the guys are immediately into the girls but like it's like they're not telling each other so i don't know it's just so freaking cute anyway um so i just read that last night because like i had some time before bed um but today's vlog is gonna all be about eleanor and gray by Brittany c cherry so this is definitely a cover love book but it's also the book that i'm reading for the bipoc author and i also have loving mr daniels by Brittany c cherry on my tbr as well so i'm hoping that i really love the writing of this one and then i'll want to pick up this one like sooner rather than later it is told in dual perspective and guys let me just show you you how pretty look at this ah how pretty you have this page which oh, how pretty does anybody know what this page in a book is called it's just this and I know what it's called but I want to see if you know what it's called so if you know what this page right here is called in a book um, let me know in the comment section down below um, but yeah, I know what it's called and yeah, it's kind of interesting. And then it has like, um, to mama, thank you for believing. And then look at that. 
Oh my gosh. So it says part one, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, yes. So starting off with a quote right there. And then we have the prologue from Eleanor, April 8th, 2003. Apparently I'm taking care of some gardening first before I start reading. So that's a thing. I also cut my lettuce because it was growing like this. And Does anybody need some green onions? All right. Um, Daniel is on a meeting call with his team and I'm going to sit out here and start Eleanor and Gray. I cut up all the green onions and put those in the freezer and I um, got the lettuce and washed it and dried it and now that is in the fridge. Um, cleaned up the kitchen, did some dishes, finished my coffee and now it's time to read. glasses because it's pretty dag darn sunny out here who knows what the temp is already let's see temperature 79 feels like 84 72 percent humidity I don't know if you can see that really hot outside I sat out there for a good almost hour and I read um, I am on page 56 and I'm really really enjoying it it's right now I am in um, 2003 and it's flipping back and forth between Eleanor's chapter chapters and Grayson's chapters and Eleanor um, met Grayson at a party that her parents basically like forced her to go to with her cousin Shay and um, Grayson like approached her this whole thing um, anyway he then later she went to go babysit like a couple days later or whatever went to go babysit and Grayson was like the neighbor three houses down or whatever and he approached her and said hey like we should go hang out sometime and um, yeah, so they've been hanging out, and since her mom has cancer, obviously that's like a really sad thing, and Grayson kind of understands that because his grandfather passed away from cancer, and him and his grandfather used to be very, very close. Um, so yeah, so that's in this little bit of portion, um, and he basically says, hey, I'm going to take you out every week, like we should hang out once a week, and she's like, why? And he's like, because I know what it's like to be sad and to be constantly like internet searching cancer and things like that. So yeah, so anyway, I am really, really enjoying it, and we're going to go from there. All right, I have marked a couple of things. Um, I do want to go back and highlight them. Oh, oh, this was crazy. It was on page 11. Okay, um, it says, Society was the worst for intro introverts, but... I was sure a changing of the tides was on the way. I couldn't wait until the day the media pushed the idea that staying home was the new cool thing to do and socializing with people you hated was a thing of the past. All of us introverts would rejoice. And I'm like, prophesizing much? Um, next up on page 34. Oh, you know those first few minutes after finishing an amazing book? Those moments when you're when you aren't quite sure what to do with yourself, you simply sit there staring at the last words, unsure how to move on with your life. How can it be over? How can those characters just fade to black? For you, the characters are still imprinted on your soul. Their actions, their dialogue are still alive and strong in your mind. Your tears haven't dried and you crave another fix. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
Okay, so Eleanor is telling her mom about Grayson for the first time, and she's saying like, I thought that the first guy I had a crush on wouldn't be like that, that he would be like, kind of like a nerdy person, and she's like, why? And um, she says because um, like, he could have any girl he wanted, so it's hard to think that he'd want. And her mom, being the boss bitch that she is, said no. Mom placed her hand on my knee. We don't do that. We don't put ourselves down. She combed my hair behind my ear and placed her hand on my cheeks. Not only are you beautiful on the outside, Eleanor Rose, but you are stunning on the inside. You are creative. You have the best laugh, laugh I've ever heard. You are kind, giving, and brave. Don't ever think you aren't good enough based on what the magazines define as beauty. You are beautiful. And I wish more mothers or more parents passed that on to their kids um, because I think a lot of times when you are a young adult, um, when you are growing and your mind is maturing, you're seeing things on social media, on Instagram, and um, you know Twitter and TikTok and you're looking at that like I need that and it's such like an imposter thing and it's you just don't you just need to be genuinely you at all times and that's beautiful that's who you're supposed to be that's who God made you and yeah I just wish that more people like more parents told their kids that because I think that there is a big disconnect um so it's kind of perfect that I'm doing my social media detox today um, because even as an adult, you compare yourself to other people and that was a great reminder that I'm fine just the way I am. I don't need to covet someone else's life or lifestyle or the way they look or the things they're doing. I'm perfect just the way I am. And I'm just so glad that Eleanor's mom is such like a strong, powerful, like loving woman and is telling Eleanor those things so she remembers them hopefully for the rest of her life. I'm getting this emotional but it's just so sad um you know Eleanor's mom I <laughs> can't even talk right now Eleanor's mom has cancer and just seeing her slowly decline and then things happen and I don't know it's a lot it's a lot um yeah I just oh, this book is gonna rip out my heart and hopefully put it back together because I don't know anytime I read about like parents um, dealing with hard things or dying or things like that it just crushes my soul um, so obviously there's a huge trigger warning for cancer and um, death of a parent um, but I will have more trigger warnings that I can think about uh, down in the description box of this video um, because if you're dealing with a family member um, that has cancer and this could be very triggering. Um, it's so well done though. Like everything about this book is perfection. I'm already gonna say like it's a five stars. I um, just moved on to chapter 16, page 94, and it's a five stars, you guys. Guys, that part was so sad. <laughs> um, I just had to get up and like pace around to my living room a little bit and, and collect myself because <sighs> it was just so sad and I can't imagine. 
you know, I literally cannot imagine. <laughs> You are here for the wind down portion of today's video. Um, I've just been collecting questions the first few days of the readathon, and I'm here to answer your questions and tell you that I finished Eleanor and Gray by Brittany C. Cherry. I'm rating this story a five out of five stars. I loved everything about it. I can see why Jacqueline loved it so much because it is that super emotional romance story there's so many layers to the story it's a second chance romance story and you really do get to see your friendship begin and blossom and then it does break apart for one reason or another and then many years later they reconnect um like i said i didn't read the full synopsis in the back so some of the things that i read definitely surprised me but i highly recommend this book if you like second chance romances emotional romances highly recommend um, but there definitely are some trigger warnings which i will leave in the description box way at the bottom for you to check out if you need those but yeah highly recommend this it's my favorite read of the readathon so far and I don't think anything is gonna beat this to be completely honest or at least this week you know what I'm saying um, this was just amazing it was so good love the cover love the author now I definitely cannot wait to read that other Brittany C cherry book that I have loving mr. Daniels um, because I think I'm really gonna like that too because I just really liked the writing it was easy to fall into it was so relatable there were so many great quotes um yeah just i can't say enough about this definitely pick up this book you guys all right now let's do the wind down portion which is where i answer your questions let me try this i've never had this wine before it looked really good in the store and i was like okay surprisingly not my favorite maybe i just need to take another sip hmm not my favorite but here we are anyway um okay so this is gonna be a little bit tough because i didn't write down the questions and i'm off social media for 24 hours which is crazy because i haven't done that since i don't think it was last summer i think it was like two summers ago anyway okay so the first question that i think someone asked me is how do i choose what to read next and i have a separated tbr shelf so i go for books on there um i do watch book two by m in the bookish community m in a book club with a large community so if i get a recommendation i'll add it to my list and then i'm just kind of a mood reader from there um the next question i got was oh if there are any booktubers that i used to watch that i no longer watch absolutely i've been on booktube for seven years so there's creators that have come and gone that i used to watch their content even non-booktubers just youtube creators in general um that have come and gone and i've loved my time with them but you know they left for whatever reason um there's also been creators that their content just completely changed and no longer fit what i was looking for um so i've stopped watching them for whatever reason um, my next question was a two-part question it was what do what other hobbies do I have outside of reading um, gardening I love to garden I don't do it quite as often um, this year we didn't really like plant a garden per se I just had like some um, I'm a vegetarian so I had like leftover veggies and I just planted them in our garden like our lettuce and our green onions and they like grew so I had to harvest them we've had our strawberries for a while we've had our raspberries for a while but the next question was is where like what kind of food 
do I like to eat when I go out or like fast food or something like that? I don't really like fast food to be completely honest. Every once in a while, a late night Taco Bell run is definitely necessary and I get the um, cheesy bean and rice burritos. Um, and then as far as other fast food, do you consider Subway fast food? Cause I love Subway. I get the veggie sub and I get the Italian bread with the American cheese and I get lettuce, tomato, red onion, pickles, olives, mayonnaise, salt and pepper. Um, let's see what else. Well, this place called Salad Works, but it's kind of like an in-between, like fast food and that. Um, I like Jason's Deli, I like Taste, but those aren't really like fast food. Oh, I do get the occasional burger, well, Impossible Whopper from Burger King. Um, we had it when we were traveling one time. It was like when it first came out and I loved it. And so my husband loves burgers. And so, um, if we don't have burgers at the house, like we'll occasionally run out and get one from Burger King, but it's like super rare because I just buy the impossible, um, patties from the grocery store. Well, like me and my husband does, and we just do them on a grill at home. So, but every once in a while, late night Taco Bell runs, late night, um, Burger King. And then other than that, like, I don't really like fast food. Um, yeah. Okay, so hopefully that answered your questions, you guys. Um, if you had any more that I didn't see, I'll try to include them in like other videos, but I think that's really all for now. I'm gonna go. I hope you had a great day three of Romance-a-thon. It's crazy that it's already like the third day and I've read a book every single day. Um, so this would definitely be my favorite one, then the one I read yesterday and then the one I read the day before. So make sure you're watching all of my vlogs, but just in case, I am definitely doing a wrap up at the end of the readathon. So anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.